So God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us today on The Kingdom and You with me, Apostle Abraham. Uh, listen, I want you to stay tuned because at the end of the show, I'm going to be praying for you, believing God for you, for you to meet your needs, to pe- and meet you at that place where have a miracle in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want you to get your pens and your notebooks as usual. You know, we love teaching the Word of God and we love uh, you receiving the depth of the things that God has in store for you. So I just want to introduce you to what we're going to be teaching on today. So the name of the show, uh, as we told you, is a kingdom in you. But what we're going to be teaching on today is living by faith. You know, I get excited every time we speak about faith because I remember a time in my life where I had nothing. And I remember God beginning to do some things just because I had given him an opportunity to, to walk by faith. You know, the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please him. So if you're saying, God, I want to walk in your ways and I want to walk in your will, then the best way for us to do that is for us to live by faith in God's word. So we're teaching from my book called The Believer's Training Handbook. And remember all of our material, all of my books. uh, In fact, most of my books are available on the World Wide Web, uh, on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and so forth, so forth. Also look out... uh, on YouTube as well, if you've missed uh, part one, because it's actually part two of Living by Faith that we've been teaching about. With learning from this book, I just showed you the Believer's Training Handbook, which forms part of uh, the Bible School. Uh, and if you're interested in that as well, uh, we should have numbers and contact details for us, uh, for you to join us. It's a fully correspondence Bible School, uh, so you can just get the material, watch the clippings, and, uh, and uh, be strongly and greatly enriched uh, by the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So thank you and welcome uh, wherever it is that you're watching from. Um, I intend to give you the word of God and I know you're going to receive it. So let's just recap a little bit when we speak about faith, what we're talking about. You know, there's a lot of faith nowadays uh, being spoken about, but what does it really mean to have the faith that God uh, is looking for, that God can use? You know, there's one thing that you need to realize is that faith is what God uses as his access into your life. That's right. If God wants to have access into your life, and he does, remember the Bible speaks about it's the Father's good pleasure to give us the things of the kingdom. So it is is the kingdom of God that is manifested through you and me when we bring it into reality because of the faith that we have. So when you begin to realize that God has got a lot of things in store for you, then the next level is to begin to develop your faith as a point of contact for God to begin to intervene in your life. Now, I don't know about you, but I want God to continually come in my life. I want God to continually show up. I want God to continually reveal things that he needs to be seen and done in my life. And I need to live by faith in God's word. So when we speak about faith, uh, we're speaking about the exchange currency of heaven. In other words, if you want to exchange something in this planet now, on this earth, you give money for it. So what we're saying in heaven is if you want to receive the things of heaven, and we know that it's God's plan for us to bring heaven to earth as Jesus prayed, as your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, then you must have faith to exchange the things that God has in store for you over there. So this is the key ingredient in every believer's life, really. To live and to walk by faith is what we've been called to do. You know, the scriptures tell us time and time again that the righteous shall live by faith, the just shall live by faith. So if you're in Christ, then you have to live by faith to bring the manifestations of the things that Jesus died for you to receive on this earth. So when we speak about faith, we're also speaking about being fully convinced that the things that God has got in store for you, He's going to do for you. In other words, when you have faith, to you it is a certain as if it had already been done. So when we speak about faith, we're speaking about seeing the unseen with the spiritual realm, with the spiritual eyes, and beginning to appropriate them and to receive them, even though they're unseen in the natural realm. uh, In the natural realm, they become seen because of the faith that we apply to them. And we know that the Bible speaks about we don't look at the things which are seen. We look at the unseen things in 2 Corinthians. It speaks about seeing is not what the believer lives by. The believer lives by believing. All right, That's why we're called believers. So in other words, 
If you want to live a successful Christian walk full of victory, time and time again, it all depends on how much you want to live in victory. Now by victory, I mean that every trial and every battle that you're facing, you want to see God come through for you, God deliver you, and God wants to do that. Remember, the Bible says that if He gave us His Son, He's not going to withhold anything else from us. And our duty is to get into God's Word and find out what promises He has in store for us. All right? So, you know, when we speak about faith, sometimes we speak about two kinds of faith. You know, we have the human faith which believes uh, when it sees. But we don't live like that. You know the expression that says, I will, uh, I will believe it when I see it? That's not the way it works in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God works in this way. I will see it when I believe it. Amen. In other words, it is your believing that brings the manifestation of the things that God has in store for you. You, not, not, you must understand that you cannot walk by human faith. What is human faith? Human faith is a kind of faith that Thomas had. And it simply says, uh, Thomas said, I will see when I see the nails in his hands and so forth and so forth. That's when I will believe that Jesus Christ is resurrected from the dead. Now we know that, uh, Thomas actually, we know that Jesus Christ came to Thomas and said, you know what, that's not faith. That is not faith because blessed are they who have not seen and yet believe. Now we're trying to drive you to that place where you can see the things that God has in store for you without actually seeing them with your natural eyes. Seeing them with the eyes of faith. Your spirit man becomes so convinced that it forms an inner image of the things that God has in store for you. And you refuse to be shaken. You refuse to be moved until the promises of God are seen in your life. Now, here's something that you need to understand about faith. Every believer has been given the measure of faith. You cannot have been born again without the measure of faith. In other words, the Bible says that we have to believe with our hearts, confess with our mouths in Romans 10 in order for us to be saved. That believing is what God speaks about when he says in Romans 12, 3, that God has given to every man the measure of faith. In other words, think about the greatest man or woman of God that you know. They've, each and every one of us has been given the measure of faith. The same measure, not a measure, meaning one has a bigger one and another one has a smaller one. You have the faith of God living inside of you. There's a miracle inside of you crying to be born. All you need is to connect to the Word of God and see the things that God has in store for you. All right? Faith has been planted inside your spirit. In other words, everything that God is going to do inside of you, He's already done by planting and giving you the measure of faith. This all depends on the amount of time that we spend in God's Word in growing and increasing our faith. And we're going to speak a little bit more about that. Now, for a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, faith is not an option. Faith is a lifestyle. All right? We can't live uh, waking up one morning saying, God, I'm going to live in doubt and in fear and in the oppression of the things that, that are surrounding me and I'm going to be in a place where uh, I'm not going to be believing. That's not an option for God. God only uses your faith to have access into your life. Now, all of these scriptures, Habakkuk 2.4, Romans 1.17, Galatians 3.11, and Hebrews 10.38, say exactly the same thing. The just shall live by faith. The righteous of God shall live by faith. So we're saying faith is not an option. It is the only way to please God. You remember over in Hebrews 11, he says without faith it's impossible to please him. Now he who comes to God must believe that he is, but also that he will reward you for seeking Him. Seeking Him how? Seeking Him in His Word above all things and seeking Him in His presence, spending time with Him, allowing God to develop the things that He needs to develop in order for Him to do the things that He needs to do. Now, here's another thing that you need to realize. Faith will please God. Alright? Why does God get pleased by our faith? Because God is, is, is uh, in a place where He wants to bring His um, his realities into our life. In other words, God is not pleased when we don't live and walk about faith because, and I say this again, because 
God wants to bring the realities of the kingdom into your life. Okay? In other words, if you don't have faith, God doesn't have access and that doesn't please Him. All right? Now, there are three main areas where your faith will be located. And I want us to, uh, I want us to go for a break. And when I come back, I'm going to be teaching you those three areas to know where your faith is located. I'll see you in just a little bit. Thank you so much for coming back. And now here's what we're talking about here. We're talking about the three areas your faith is located. So what we're doing is we're looking at the important facts about the God kind of faith. Now we said the God kind of faith is not human faith. The human faith believes when it sees, it touches, it feels and so forth. But the God kind of faith doesn't need all of the senses or any of the senses to be activated. The God kind of faith is God's word says it. I choose to believe it. And I trust the word of God to form the kind of faith in me that releases the blessings that God has in store for me. Now, faith is in your thoughts, your heart and your mouth. Now, many times when you read about faith in the scriptures, you'll find that there's a heart and mouth connection. Heart and mouth connection. For example, Romans 10 will speak about uh, the faith must be in your heart, then it must be spoken in your mouth for you to be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, what does this mean? This simply means you can't fake faith. If you spend enough time developing your faith in the Word of God, it's going to eventually come into your heart. And eventually, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth will begin to speak. Now, if you find yourself speaking uh, negative words, words of uh, inoperative and uh, just words of death all the time. I'm never going to make it. I don't know when this is going to happen. If God is going to come through, God will never use me, etc., etc., etc. If you find yourself constantly using those kind of words, it's because you don't have enough faith inside your heart. Now, how do you get enough faith in your heart? There's only one way. Romans 10, 17 tells it that faith will come by hearing the word of God. In other words, like now as I'm beginning to preach God's word to you, you're hearing it. And when you're hearing it, faith is beginning to become developed. Now, what is the next step that you need to do? The next step that you need to do is say, hold on. I'm not concerned about my background, my religious uh, teachings or this and this. If this is the word of God, I'm going to listen to it and I'm going to be blessed by it and I'm going to choose to believe it. And I'm going to search the scriptures and find that the word of God is going to deliver me out of this situation. Whatever the situation is, financial ruin, uh, relationship problems, or whatever the devil's trying to throw at you. You must take the word of God and begin to speak it. Now, here's what is important. Faith is in the thoughts. In other words, when we say faith is in the thoughts, before anything can come inside your heart, your spirit man, and become a part of you, you must choose to believe the things that God has in store for you. In other words, because of the you're growing up and the way you've done things before and uh, your negative perceptions about God's word or whatever, the thoughts is a very important place for the word of God to rest. In other words, when you begin to think more of the word, and as Philippians 4 says, begin to think of things which are good, lovely, pure, and of good report, that's when faith begins to, uh, the faith deposits. Just picture a trickling down from the mind into the heart. Faith deposits begin to come and come and come and come until the word of God comes out of your mouth. We're going to speak a little bit more about the power of faith in your tongue. 
in just a little bit. Now, did you know your faith will grow? I mentioned this a little bit just earlier in the show, that in order for you to become a great man or woman of God, you know, faith in, in God and His things, you have to allow your faith to grow. Amen. Listen, I will tell you this, and this is one thing for certain. Faith is like a muscle, all right? Now, what happens with muscles? Muscles stretch and grow when they are used. The bigger your muscles, the more flexible they are, the more movement you have, and the stronger you become. Exactly the same way. You use the faith that you have by beginning to apply it to a situation. That's when it begins to grow. Now, sometimes God will permit uh, some certain things to happen in our lives, not for us to be defeated by that situation, but for us to rise up and use the word of faith in order to receive the victory. In other words, I'm going to read this uh, in 1 Peter 1 and verse 7. And you're going to find that everything that you're going through in life right now is not meant to destroy you. It's meant to grow you. Now listen to what 1 Peter 1 and verse 7 says. It says, In this you greatly rejoice, from verse 6, that now for a little while, if need be, if need be, you've been grieved by various trials. Now believer, if you're going through an impossible situation right now, if you're going through a situation that simply you cannot see your way out of it, just remember, verse 17, that the genuineness of your faith, which is much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. What is the scripture saying? here? The scripture is saying one thing. Whatever it is that you're growing through, is exactly that. You're meant to go through it. You remember Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil. In other words, you may be in the valley of the shadow of death, but you're walking through it. Your situation, your trial is not permanent. All it takes is the word of God and faith in God with, with enriched thanksgiving to see God deliver you out of that situation. Now, here's something that you need to understand as well. Do you remember the times when Jesus was with the disciples in the boat? And for example, in one situation, uh, they were on the Sea of Galilee and it began to uh, roar. And, and Jesus said, how are ye of little faith? In other words, Jesus measured their faith and found that it was a little and then in another account in the Gospels, we find Jesus meeting a centurion man. And what did Jesus say to him? He said, I'm going to come and heal your daughter. The centurion man said, hold on. You're a man under authority. Just send the word. And Jesus marveled and said, how great is your faith? What am I saying? The faith that you have can be measured. And it is usually measured by how much you trust and depend on God's word. In other words, the more faith that you want, the more word of God that you begin to apply and receive as truth against the situation that you're facing. All right? Your faith will grow when you apply it. Now, it is God's absolute will and intention for Him to take you to new levels and higher levels of faith. You remember over in Romans and Hebrews, actually, Hebrews chapter 12, he says, we look unto Jesus because he's the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus is always writing new chapters of your faith. If you look to him, and how do you look to him? You look to him through his word. You remember time and time again, the scriptures tell us that Jesus Christ is the word of God. He's the amen. So just begin to remember that every time that you want to find yourself growing in faith. Look to God's word. That's your source of faith. Now, here's something that you need to realize. Your faith, even though it grows, it has absolutely no limitations. There are no limitations to how much your faith can grow and become. 
It all depends on you and the amount of faith that you are willing to receive from the Word of God. Now, I know I'm stirring you up right now because you're saying, uh, man of God, Apostle Abraham, I want to move to new dimensions of faith because the scripture says we move from faith to faith. In other words, whenever faith is produced in your life, it will create some kind of movement from faith to faith. God's never intended for your faith to stay in one place. Why is this? Because there are giants and battles you are facing today of which the faith of yesterday cannot defeat. You need a fresh word from God. You need a fresh faith. You need to develop your faith. So you can't rely on your past experiences in the way you used to handle things before in order for you to say, hold on, I am now going to apply my faith because of what I did yesterday. You need to get inside God's word in order for him to grow and to develop it. All right. Now, when we speak about characteristics of faith, now we're just speaking about important facts of faith and I'm just giving you an introduction to faith, really. But now we want to see what does faith look like? We say we have faith or we don't have faith. What does that look like? Now, I don't know about you, but I love to be practical in my teachings. I love when my teachings come that you can, you can, uh, you can see it and appropriate it as a reality in your life. The characteristics of faith. How do you know when you're moving in faith and when you're not moving in faith? I'll tell you one thing. First of all, one way we will tell whether you're moving by faith or not is when we say faith is based on the Word of God. You know, faith is not based on, uh, on anything else. The promises of government, the promises of this person, the promises of that person. That's human faith. Those are people that you rely on because you've seen or heard. But hey, they're going to disappoint you. If you want to live in constant victory in your life, you must apply the Word of God as the source of your faith. Now, I always say this and I say it again. Whether you're gifted in dreams and visions or prophecies or you've received prophecies or you receive dreams and visions, that's well and fine, that's good. But this is the most reliable source of faith. How did Jesus attack the enemy? How did he respond to the enemy when the enemy was tempting him? He said, it is written. Now, I want to ask you a question. Do you have an it is written statement for the time the enemy attacks you? Because if you don't, you will be defeated by that situation. It'll drag on longer than it has to go. It'll have more consequences than it has. You need to put a stop to whatever the enemy's curse or whatever the enemy's plans or activities are in your life. How? By applying the word of God as the source of your faith. All right? Now, another characteristic of faith. Faith is now. Faith is now. Now, I don't have time to get into this because we've come to the end of the show. But I'm just whetting your appetite for what we'll be talking about next week. All right? But what you need to realize is when your faith is now, glory to God, it's not based on the past or the present, necessarily. It's based on, actually it's not based on the past or the future. Your, your faith is based in the present time, all right? So we're gonna get into, into that a little bit more when we begin to teach about faith is in the now, and you're gonna understand what that means. But right now I just wanna pray with you and believe God with you, whatever it is that you are standing and believing God for. Amen. Can we do that right now? Can you stretch your hands towards this TV screen as I begin to lose my faith over your situation? But before I do that, if you know that your life needs Jesus, just cry out and say, Jesus, save my soul. Have mercy on me, son of David. And find a good Bible-based church and get in there and start growing. All right. Make sure you're born again. It's very important. How? Believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Cry out to Him and believe that. So stretch your hands right now, wherever it is that you are. Father, I just thank you in Jesus' name that right now with the faith that I'm using throughout the airwaves, that you're going to begin to touch your people. 
Father, I pray for sickness and infirmities to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for all manner of demonic bondages to begin to be lifted from your people. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that your people are free, free to serve you, free to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. Crown them with loving kindness and tender mercies right now, wherever they may be, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I just thank you, Father, for doing this because you are a miracle working God in Jesus' name. Look, I trust you've enjoyed today's show, but let us know how you're doing. We know we're getting responses sometimes from many different parts of Africa. Let us know what the show is doing for you. Um, Email us, contact us, let us know, because we get encouraged when you are encouraged by the Word of God. Now, this is me, Apostle Abraham, signing out and reminding you the kingdom is in you.